Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to uh, talk about uh, the Helmo Mount in, in this, uh, central Poland. This is a work of a uh, team of co collaborators of uh, uh, Sikora, who was the uh, um, uh, leader of the project, Kotkita, who was responsible for uh, geomorphology and geochemistry, and myself for the uh, geophysics. Um, this is the, on this slide you can see um, how the area looks from an aerial uh, view. It's a, a really um, impressive hill for the area of central Poland, which is relatively flat. And uh, there's a, a scene from far away, a really impressive forested hill that uh, imposes itself over 200 meters on the area around it. It's seen from quite far away. And uh, this uh, place uh, has been uh, a subject of archaeological interest as it is home to a hill fort or a stronghold which is dated to the uh, early uh, medieval. Uh, as you can see, uh, we started this project over here because of cultural heritage management reasons as uh, it's a really important uh, and quite um, uh, original uh, archaeological site uh, in, in the area, not, but not much is known about it except that it exists. And unfortunately, it has been uh, so, uh, it has fallen into quarrying, which is visible in these areas over here. Uh, and and you can see how the quarrying and the forestation of this area has been uh, going on at least since the. 1940s on this, as you can see on this archival picture, aerial picture. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a really big problem because this is quite an extensive area, quite a large archaeological site, and uh, the quarrying is quite serious. It's 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 going on. It's still uh, taking place and it's expanding. So uh, we we need to do something to see uh, if uh, the areas that are potentially liable for quarrying. Uh, perhaps need some form of uh, legal, legal protection as an archaeological uh, monument. Uh, we started uh, this research from acquiring uh, LiDAR data, as is, uh, I guess, the most typical and uh, the, the method that opened woodlands to uh, Polish archaeologists uh, since it uh, appeared for free on the internet and caught everyone by surprise. Uh, you can have uh, this data has been acquired for, for non-archaeological purposes. The entire country is scanned now. Probably many people will be talking about it, so I won't go into details. And uh, the, the point cloud was visualized, uh, uh, created a DEM and visualized. And uh, of course, I guess, depending on who you are, if, if you're a, more of a geogra geography type of person, you'll probably see the really visible boring over here. And if you're an archaeologist, you'll probably notice the impressive, quite impressive ramparts and quite well preserved. Uh, uh, the, the central one towering over a well three meters uh, in, in the terrain, which is uh, quite a, a rare thing because most hill forts and strongholds from this, uh, in this area are in lowlands and they have been subject to destruction, uh, plowing, and various other agrotechnical activities which have influenced their state of preservation. Uh, this uh, is not the case here, and in fact, uh, even before any, any field work was, was started, the new data, the amount of new data arriving from, from this LiDAR data set was, was extremely huge, as we can see uh, a few in this area, a few other previously unknown delimitations, fortifications, however you may call them, were, were no noticed by us. Um, it's, uh, this is a, a quite, quite an important place in the history of Poland, as it has been described by the Polish, famous Polish chronicle Janusz Lugosius, and he uh, names this uh, place as an uh, important, uh, um, important um, um, uh, center of uh, administration of the, of the Polish, Polish uh, uh, early uh, medieval Polish state. And in fact, even even now, uh, even until recently, it's been used and uh, has a, even a symbolical meaning. It's quite an interesting place. If you, if you go there, it's uh, uh, a bit uh, magical. Maybe that's not too scientific, but it's a really interesting, quiet, and special place. And uh, just at, at the base of, of these uh, ramparts, and you, you got rock carvings made by people from the 19th century. 
asking uh, God to give Poland back its independence. So it was a place of, of pilgrimage of, of various people be, uh, praying for, for various stuff. Uh, before, before this project, uh, it was uh, studied by rescue excavations of Janina Kaminska, which were, um, she, she basically uh, was looking for the chronological differentiation of the area, which is what was always was a really important uh, aspect of studying hill forts and strong fo strongholds. And she noted in, in uh, some limited small scale, really small scale excavations in uh, stratigraphy uh, that she proposed two phases of the hill fort from the 10th century and 11th to 13th century. Uh, Yezhe Shikora in 2004 and 2005, before the invention of Vidar, was interesting, interested in this place and also did some field walking that revealed previously unknown uh, uh, outer, outer ramparts. Uh, this has been a part of a larger program that we have been conducting with, with this team since 2013, I think, and this and Helmo was, was uh, studying in 2013. And it uh, encompassed the, the study of uh, the topic of medieval strongholds and hill forts in the area of central Poland. And this was uh, a non-invasive project with the use of non-invasive methods, remote sensing, geophysics, field walking, geochemistry, etc. Uh, and uh, some more um, uh, LiDAR visualizations, uh, which uh, are quite important in, in, in the differentiation of uh, uh, archaeological features. Uh, because uh, what most people use are, are hill-shaded uh, DEMs, which are quite good, but in the context of uh, terrain forms that have uh, high changes in the topography, the hill shades uh, have this uh, quite serious drawback that they, um, the, the, the artificially created shadow obscures certain features in, in the shadows, especially in areas located on, on slopes. So we also have been using generally open source software for, uh, for uh, after acquiring the data cloud, the point cloud, uh, for creation of uh, DM models, in this case, uh, done in uh, Saga, and also in, in a relief visualization toolbox, uh, which is really, uh, really a great tool. And uh, just a comparison, why, this, why, why we chose this area uh, as a topic of our presentation, is indeed uh, the medieval strongholds in this area, and generally, are quite uh, relatively small features, and this is all in one scale, as you can see this is the, the Mount Helmo stronghold, which is uh, really impressive, and really quite a landscape feature, which is uh, quite suitable for um, large-scale non-invasive uh, prospection. But um, there is one problem, doing the LiDAR, uh, doing all the field walking is uh, a really great thing, and it has opened us for, for woodland archaeology, which was previously a blank area for, for Polish archaeologists, basically. And uh, I remember doing surveys uh, in heavy forested areas before LiDAR and basically uh, even if someone is really good in the field, getting lost is, is quite easy. But there's another problem because the, our pro program of non-invasive research of these hillforts included geophysics. And this is quite, quite some time ago, uh, maybe perhaps it won't be too... Uh, it won't be not true if we say it was a bit pioneering as uh, before that. And not a lot of uh, large-scale geophysics were uh, done in forested areas. Generally, uh, a really difficult area for geophysics, which is really important to uh, remember, because you've got uh, lots of sources of noise and lots of sources that uh, do not allow you to uh, mm, carry out the surveys in a, in a continuous manner, which I think is, is the most important thing for, for the geophysical results. Is, that the results are not in one, one small area over here, one small area over there, it's there in a continuity. And uh, this was indeed uh, the problem here. And i uh, just like to note that it's really important to choose the right time of year, because our first attempt at this area was in, in May of 2013, which was not a good idea, because uh, it basically didn't look like this. It looked a bit, I guess, I never was in Vietnam, but that's the way I imagine it, that it looked and nothing could be done. And uh, fortunately, we had the, the leisure of um, postponing that. And now you can see basically uh, at the end of um, uh, um, November, yeah, at the end of November. Uh, so at the end of November, it actually looked uh, quite well. It was quite nice doing these surveys. Uh, the trees, uh, if they're not too dense, they're not really a big problem for, for, for doing the, the measurements. Uh, the biggest problem, uh, in, in my opinion, are the 
small kind of bushes and those kind of areas. But fortunately, even though this is a protected area, protected ecological area, uh, these can be cut out. So I guess it's really important to choose the right time of year and the right kind of preparation in order to do this. Uh, there's uh, the results uh, encompassing over five hectares of, of magnetic radiometry, which, which is this method used with a small scale sensor, just like the app that in geophysics there is now a, a fashion I and mean, really good progress, progressive thing happening that people are having more and more sensors with mobile mobilized carts and stuff like that. You, you won't really get to use that in, in a forest, so handheld systems are uh, also quite a good idea to use. And these are the uh, results, which I'd like to just quickly go over. And uh, uh, the question is usually, uh, w at that time when we were doing uh, these surveys, a lot of people were asking us, yeah, but why are you doing it? Everything is known. We can see the ramparts, we can see everything. And uh, the, that was, that's a question that appears quite often, not only in, in, in areas with visible topography, but generally with regards to geophysics. And uh, I can say that it was uh, really, uh, really worth it. We didn't know what would happen, because that's usually a question that appears, how do you think the survey will go, and the right answer you should give is, uh, I don't know, we will see. Uh, and uh, we saw that uh, our work re really, really paid off. Uh, lots of interesting data, not only for, from a purely uh, archaeological perspective, but we can see that the noisy background of the uh, bedrock, of the shallow bedrock, which is uh, an important uh, piece of information for us to note that uh, there's a lot of, the background is magnetic, so there might not be a lot of contrast uh, the most important aspect of, of this research was, in fact, that even though uh, the most uh, uh, prevalent data was from the ramparts, uh, we actually got to see uh, the construction within the magnetic uh, data of how, how, it, how they were uh, created, um, calibrating this information with uh, a lot, lot of excavations from similar uh, medieval ramparts we could propose, uh, basically, uh, perhaps, how these uh, ramparts were, were created and with what material. Uh, of course, there were uh, some features that are uh, not too clearly visible, but for instance, this kind of uh, uh, outlying enclosure over here, which uh, is not a terrain form, it's a purely sub subterranean feature, which was not previously known, and uh, some uh, areas that suggest the uh, um, uh, sunken, sunken features, which was one of the big questions uh, and uh, generally a big research question regarding the hillforts, were they used, were they, uh, used as uh, constant habitation and settlements or were they used for defensive purposes or ritual purposes because there's not a lot of pottery found there. And also other landscape features which you can't really register in any other method uh, uh, that, which didn't really come out really that well in other methods which uh, are visible here. Uh, li linear feature, really, really small amplitude anomalies that lead to certain areas that we propose that are these. Uh, this is the, the zoom in on this area. So uh, uh, th these are, this is the area of the outline uh, uh, ramparts that were previously unknown. It was quite a challenge to do these measurements over here because of a uh, slope and uh, this area started looking, you know, getting lots of you know, low vegetation over here. So, and uh, the, the really dangerous area where you could easily kill yourself uh, if you wanted to, uh, or not wanted to even, uh, of the creeping, uh, endangering and destructive force of the contemporary and historical quarry. We also tried some earth resistance, which is a different method. Uh, as you can see, a lot of features were discovered over here, all these black spots, which are low, low resistivity areas. Uh, these are actually, this is a really big problem in, in the woodland survey with this method of earth resistance, is that this is actually the root system of trees which uh, I guess it, it must be really interesting for people who study trees, but maybe not exactly for archaeologists. This is a form of noise, so that was a really big problem. Taking all of this into account, we created an integrated geophysical data set, so uh, creating a kind of a landscape approach to it uh, with uh, other features that uh, could be uh, read out from this data, even potential guard towers. So uh, from... Uh, 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 oh, Jesus. And uh, geochemistry provided really interesting uh, results with uh, a simplified field method of phosphate analysis, which showed that, in fact, the phosphate was quite high, uh, which suggested a constant habitation of this area. The uh, pottery, which due to the lack of plowing, uh, was not mm, too visible on, on this area, it was not too, it didn't create a comprehensive data set that really didn't put anything 
uh, significant into our study, but this was carried out nonetheless. Uh, and uh, this is the, our summary of uh, what we know based now only on purely and solely geophysical approaches uh, to the area. Uh, as a, uh, as a um, personal note, uh, this, was a, uh, this survey was quite a challenge and there were a lot of questions being asked, what will happen, what, what, what will uh, be done. There's also, uh, if, you, if you take geophysical and non-invasive handbooks, some people even write that you can't do geophysics in the forest. And I guess uh, not because it's legal and they will shoot you, but that it's impossible due to the, the terrain obstacles. Uh, so I guess uh, the important uh, lesson of uh, uh, the lesson we learned is that uh, you have to be kind of elastic. You, these precon preconceptions that we have of various methods are quite important. We should treat them seriously, but each place uh, requires a specific approach. And this approach, even despite that it was a challenge, yielded uh, a new interpretation, a really um, a significant amount of archaeologically uh, sensitive data and important data for the heritage management of this area and perhaps better protection. And basically it gave us a lot more than uh, those small scale excavations in, in the 50s that were carried out. But again in the 50s these uh, possibilities didn't exist. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>